Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today I'm going to give you one data science insider secret that I hope will help you along your data science journey. If you stay till the end, I'll even share a work sample that helps you leverage this information further. One thing that I've found in my collaboration with other data scientists is that many of them rely heavily on outside resources when writing code and when doing data science. I obviously do this myself as well. When you're doing data science in practice, most data scientists have another tab open with Stack Overflow, uh, source documentation, past work samples, etc., that they're constantly referring to. Being a good data scientist doesn't mean that you're a great programmer or you're incredible at statistics. It means that you have a solid foundation, but you also know exactly where to look for information that you don't completely have a grasp of. In addition, if you're stuck and you can't find a solution somewhere else, you know the documents, the research papers, the past course work that you've done that you can go back to and you can find a solution uh, you know, from the ground up there as well. Other data scientists may not want to share this information because it could detract from their image or potentially from their credibility. Many people don't want to admit that they can't sit down and code an entire data science project from scratch. However, I don't really, I don't think I know a single person that can. Everyone has to refer to outside research, information, and materials to get good quality of work done. Another insider secret that they won't tell you is how important hitting the like button, subscribing, and turning on notifications is for helping this channel grow through the YouTube algorithm. If you enjoy this content, please do those things. I would hope that this is a relief to many of the people who are going about learning this field. You don't have to know everything, you're just constantly learning and referencing materials as you go. I can't think of a single project that I've done where I've sat down start to finish um, and, and completed the project without Googling or referencing documentation a significant amount. Many data scientists also have a code library that they use to set up each new project, or they'll have a list of common functions that they routinely use uh, you know, throughout their analysis. When I was first starting out, I even used a script that one of my professors gave me for months until I got uh, you know, accustomed to memorizing the commands. Even now, I reference my old code for specific types of plots, uh, and I especially do it when I, when I code in R, because I don't do that as commonly. I would say that this is a very common practice, and I recommend building your own you know, kind of source code document. This code would generally start with the most common packages that you use. For almost all of my work, I import pandas, matplotlib, and numpy, and I generally use the same steps when importing and analyzing the data as well. There are also some general plots that I like to use, so I include code for how to build those as well. Here's a kind of a sample of a code document uh, that, that, I, that I use and that you could go about using to get started here. I've included this basic framework or starter code in my GitHub linked in the description below. As you can see, it's relatively simple, but it can get you up and running very quickly, and it can save you some, some pretty aggressive time and effort when you're starting out with these projects and when you're starting to learn data science. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.